All right. Okay, so chemical equilibrium. So first of all, I'm going to begin. All right, so I'm going to begin with um, types of chemical reaction. Is a sec. Okay. All right. So I'm going to begin with types of chemical reaction. So first of all, before we discuss the type uh, types of chemical reaction, let's have a better understanding of what chemical reaction is all about. Now, in science, chemical reaction is basically. You see your head since I want to do something. You just sit down here. Okay, in science, chemical reaction involves two important components. One is a reactant, that is what you are mixing together to create something out of it. So, the components that you have to combine together in order to produce a new component is what is referred to as a reactant. So what you produce after your chemical combination, so the new result you obtain, you are going to obtain, is what we call the product. Okay, just like cooking a food, the intention is to cook a raw food, and in the end you have a cooked word meal. So chemical reaction is just similar to that. So it is a process in which the reactants undergo chemical changes. Now chemical ch changes like um, breaking of bonds, like covalent bonds, like ionic bonds, like metallic bonds in some chemical compounds. So the reactant will undergo changes, their bonds will be broken, and some of the component elements will merge with others, and then a product will be formed. So the reactant undergo changes and then produce what? Substances called what? Products. Now, which are different from them? So chemical reactions are classified into two. We have reversible and then we have irreversible word reactions. Now for something to be reversed, it means that you can repeat the same process over and over again. So when you change this to a new form, you can also change it back to old form. But for irreversible, it is not like that. Once you change the substance to a new form, it cannot be changed back to its original form. Now, a perfect example or a common irreversible reaction in our environment is the me uh, melting of candle wax. Now, as you can actually, as you're burning your candle, the only thing is that the candle will keep melting, which is true. And then you can also pick the same wax, okay, and remove it back into a new candle. Now you also have what your candle will do. So let's begin with the irreversible word reactions. So the irreversible, reaction, irreversible reactions, okay, they occur in one direction only, okay? So in irreversible reaction, you have to keep moving forward. You can't go back, okay? So that is what the irreversible reactions are. So they occur only in one direction. So you go on towards a complete step, okay? So for example, is when an unreactive product are, what, are formed, as in the case of what, the decomposition of what, ammonium what, uh, nitrous. Okay, so that will give us an ammonia gas and then water. Okay, and then we also have when all precipitate reaction, uh, reactions are what, irreversible. So all precipitate reactions are irreversible, like in the case of reaction between barium chloride and tetraoxyacetate 6 that will give barium precipitate and then what hydrochloric wood acid so and then hydro, hydrochloric wood acid so now we also have neutralization reaction 
such as the reaction between, uh, so neutralization basically is a reaction between an acid and a base to form salt and water. So when tetragonal surfaces react with potassium hydroxide, that would produce what potassium tetragonal sulfate sticks, and then water is one of the products. So the tel potassium tetragonal sulfate sticks is the salt, and then you have water, which is also one part of it. So redox reaction, that is oxidation reduction reaction. As in the case of what um, iron chloride, okay, and tin chloride as well, okay. That will give rise to what will give rise to what um, another um, form uh, compound of um, tin and also what and also iron. That is also what an irreversible what reaction. And then you have combustion reaction that involves what oxygen. Okay, so you have magnesium, which is a metal, reacting in the presence of oxygen to form magnesium oxide. So that is also an irreversible reaction. <clears throat> Now for the reversible reactions, okay. So for the reversible reactions, now they occur in both forward and backward directions, meaning that even when you convert a substance that can undergo such a reaction <clears throat> to a new product, that new product can also be converted back to the former product, uh, component. So for the irreversible reaction, okay, they occur both in forward and in backward direction. So a perfect example is reaction between nitrogen gas and oxygen gas, okay, to form uh, <clears throat> dinitrogen one um, oxide, okay? And then we also have the reaction between iron and then we are between iron and water that will also give iron oxide and hydrogen gas. Now, in an open flat, the vaporization of water as well as the decomposition of calcium carbonate are irreversible reactions. And in closed flats, both reactions become what? They become reversible. So the basic thing you need to know is this. Reversible reactions occur in both forward and backward directions. For the irreversible, they only occur in forward direction, so you cannot reverse such what a reaction. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at what equilibrium means. Now, the word equilibrium in physical sense is explained as no change of state of the body. When all the forces acting on a body are equal, okay, Certainly, that body or that object will be in a state of equilibrium, meaning that the body would not move. Okay, it's going to be in a fixed what position. So in this case, you have two opposing processes or reactions occurring simultaneously. Which oh, no, no, no. Uh, so when you have two processes occurring simultaneously with equal rate, the system will be in a state of what equilibrium. Okay. Now equilibrium is classified into two. We have the chemical and then the physical. Please mute yourself. Hello. Dagbion, can you mute yourself? Yes, sir. I'm Helga. Okay, please mute yourself. All right, so we have the chemical equilibrium and then the physical equilibrium. So for the chemical equilibrium, okay, it occurs both in homogeneous condition and in heterogeneous word condition. Okay, so we'll still talk about the chemical and the physical equilibrium as well. But just have this idea that an equilibrium is basically a state, okay, when there is no change in the state of a body when the two reactions occur simultaneously at equal rate and as such that system will be in a state of what chemical equilibrium. Now let's look at the physical one. So when an equilibrium exists between the same species, it is called the physical equilibrium. Now in this, the opposing process involves only one physical change, okay? 
So here you have a physical chain of water, okay, from these ice towards to normal water. And we all know that when ice changes to normal water, oh, yeah. the process is referred to as what melting. Because ice is what the solid form of water. The water itself now is in the liquid form. So such an equilibrium is a physical word equilibrium. Okay. And it involves only one physical word change. Okay. It is it involves only one physical word, one physical change. A change that you can see. <clears throat> okay, a change that you can see. All right. Now we have more of what the um the physical equilibrium. Okay. So one, we also have another one here. So we have the physical, more examples on the physical equilibrium. So another one <clears throat> is the change of water from solid to liquid. And then we also have water changing from liquid to gas. And from solid to liquid, it is called melting. Now from liquid to gas, it is called evaporation. And it can also be vaporization. It can also be what boiling. Now from, <clears throat> from solid to gas, okay, it is called sublimation. Okay, you have iodine, okay, changing from solid to what to gas. And iodine on, can undergo what sublimation. So sublimation is a process whereby a substance will change from being a solid to gas without passing through the liquid state. Okay. Now, some examples of compounds that can also undergo sublimation are some solid room freshness. Okay. Once you mount them or you place them in the room, okay, they keep or they keep emitting the nice fragrance. Okay. Until they are no longer what. Um, until, until they, uh, they evaporate into what? Into the air. Now we also have solid um, to solution, like sugar being solid. And when you add water to it, or when you dissolve it in water, it will give rise to what? Sugar solution. It is also a physical equilibrium. And then you have gas in a solution. So you have oxygen gas, okay? So when dissolved in a solution, that will give rise to what? Aqueous what? Oxygen. Now let's look at equilibrium. What is a chemical equilibrium and how does this equilibrium act or how does it operate? Now, when an equilibrium exists between different species, it is called chemical equilibrium. Okay, as in the case of elements combining with an element to give a compound, or compound compound to give rise to, um, or compound decomposing to give rise to new word compound. Compound, sorry. So we have nitrogen combining with hydrogen gas to give what ammonia gas. And then you will have calcium carbonate, okay? Undergoing what decomposition to give rise to calcium of uh, calcium or calcium oxide and then carbon two oxide. It is a chemical word equilibrium. Now, as you can see, the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen, both reactants are in gaseous form. And the products are what? The product form is also what in a gaseous form. So one thing you need to know is that if the chemical equilibrium has only one phase, okay, that is the same state of matter from the reactant down to products, it means that it is a homogeneous word equilibrium. Okay, it is a homogeneous chemical word equilibrium. But if the species are not the same, they are not in the same phase, as in the case of having a solid decomposing to solid and gas, okay, is that the heterogeneous chemical equilibrium. Okay, so the basic difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous is that homogeneous involves the same, the species are going to be are in always in the same phase, but for the heterogeneous, they are in different word phases. Okay, you can have a solid and a liquid, you can also have solid, liquid, and gas. You can also have mention maybe solid and gas or solid and liquid. That is what heterogeneous word equilibrium. 
Now, so here we have just our chart, our equilibrium um, curve, showing the reactants, the time, and also the products that is formed. So we are going to talk about the chemical um, equilibrium itself. So basically, it is a stage of a reversible reaction at which the active masses of the reactants and products become constant in a mixture and do not change with time. So the chemical equilibrium is also a state of a reversible reaction, meaning that it is a forward and also a backward reaction. At which measurable properties like color, density, pressure, and concentration are nearly what unchangeable. Okay, so that is it about for the equilibrium. And also features of chemical equilibrium is that one, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction. So when you change something to a product, you can also change it back towards to the reactant. Okay. So the rate of forward is the same thing as what the, uh, the same as the rate of backward reaction. Now it is obtained only when reversible reaction is carried out in a close word space. So one condition about equilibrium is that it has to be in a close word space. Now, at constant temperature, it is characterized by properties like color, density, and pressure. So these are like parameters that you can actually what, use to monitor what equilibrium. Now, it is also possible for both words, for both directions, and it is dynamic in nature. It is not static, meaning that the reaction is not going to be ceased as the reaction occurs in both directions with equal rates. And one thing you need to know is that a positive catalyst can set up equilibrium in less time, but cannot change it. Okay, so catalyst speeds the rate of a chemical reaction, but that cannot stop what equilibrium. It can that cannot change the state of what of an equilibrium of a substance of a system. So at equilibrium, the Gibbs free energy that is delta H is equal to zero. As delta H is equal to what change in enthalpy minus temperature times change in what entropy. Okay, so delta H is change in enthalpy, T stands for temperature, and then delta S stands for change in what entropy. And change in entropy is equal to what change in what uh, is temperature, change in what entropy. Okay, so these are the conditions at equilibrium. So let's look at law of mass action because we'll be, we'll be dealing with products and reactants. So let's look at this. Now, the law of mass action was first introduced by um, Goldberg and Wade. Now, the law of mass action states that the, the rate at which a substance reacts is directly proportional to its active mass. And the rate at which different substances react together is directly proportional to the products of their active masses. So basically, law of mass action is not applicable for solids. And for them, active mass is always what one. So for we have example, we have um, potassium, react, uh, potassium chloride reacting with what the oxygen. Now we have the equilibrium constant that is K because we'll be dealing with it as well. So the equilibrium constant is ratio of the rate of the forward reaction and backward reaction at a particular temperature. So in other words, this is basically the ratio of the active masses of the reactant to that of the active masses of the product at a particular temperature, okay? And it is denoted by capital letter C with a subscript word C, indicating that it is an equilibrium word constant. So when the concentration is taken into consideration, into concentra uh, consideration, okay, and by K, that is equilibrium constant at a particular pressure. When the partial pressure is taken, is also what taken into what into consideration. So KP is used when pressure is taken Morning. into consideration. Morning. Okay. So we have um, complete reaction, uh, completion of reaction. Okay, for being proportional to equilibrium constant, the stability of the reactant the stability of the product. So, but what you need to know is that the equilibrium constant does not depend on certain factors. One is the initial concentration 
or the pressure of the reactants and um, products involved. Another one is the presence of the catalyst. As I earlier mentioned, a catalyst will speed the rate of a reaction, but that doesn't mean that a catalyst can change what's the equilibrium position and state of a system. And when there is the presence of an inert gas, like uh, uh, gases of the group, um, and the, the gas and uh, the elements in group eight, most of them are inert, they are inert world gases. And also the direction from which equilibrium has been set up. So all these are factors that the equilibrium, const equilibrium constant does not depend upon. All right, so we have the effect of temperature here. Okay, so we'll talk about certain factors that affect the equilibrium constant one after the other. Now, basically, uh, there is a connection between temperature and the kinetic energy, okay, of a system. Now, we all know that temperature has to do with the degree of hotness and coldness of a system. But what happens when you increase the temperature of a system? What happens when you decrease the temperature of a system? All this, all this, uh, this factor plays a, word, a key role in terms of what the reaction in a chemical world in a system. So the variation of equilibrium constant with temperature is given by the Van Hoff equation as follows. Okay, so we'll talk about these factors one after the other. But just have an idea that an increase in temperature will also what has an effect on what on the equilibrium constant. I'm uh, sorry, the equilibrium what the equilibrium position of what of a system. Now we have the Lucet Lias um, <clears throat> principle. Okay, now. The Lotus-Chatelier's uh, principle, basically this, uh, it describes the effect of change in concentration, pressure and pressure and temperature when it comes to a reversible system, a system that undergoes both forward and backward word reaction. So if the system at equilibrium is subjected to a change of concentration or temperature or pressure, the system will adjust itself in such a way that the effect of these changes can be neglected or minimized. That is one thing about the equilibrium system. So when you increase the system, uh, if you increase the temperature of a system, what will happen to the system? So the system will, will, uh, will react in this fashion. Okay, why it is either it will convert the reactant to products, okay, so as to what adjust to the, what, to the effect of what of the temperature. That is how an equilibrium, equilibrium system behaves. So the, what, based on the Lochat their principle, so the principle states that when a system at equilibrium is subjected to change in concentration, pressure, and temperature, the system will adjust itself. So it will adjust itself in such a way that it will, it will um, neutralize the effect of these world changes so as to ensure that everything becomes what balanced. So the effect of concentration is one. So let's look at concentration first. So the key factors when it comes to the principle, we have concentration, we have temperature, and then we have what pressure. So what will happen when you increase the concentration of a substance in the system? So an increase in concentration of any substance favors the reaction in which it is used of that is in opposite to a direction. So if you increase the concentration of a reactant in a system, it will favor the formation of more product. Okay? It means that more products will keep what will keep forming and forming and forming and forming. But what happens when you decrease the concentration? Okay, since we said the concentration, if you increase the concentration, it will favor forward reaction, that is formation of more products. But what if you decrease the concentration of the reactants? It means that more products will no longer be formed because the starting materials are no longer what, available. All the material you need to start up the reaction, they are no longer available. So nothing will be formed. So there will be a decrease in the formation of products. But when you increase the concentration of the product, that will favor what? The backward reaction. 
so as to what ensure that the system attain what we call equilibrium. That what you have at the product side is equal to what you have at the reactant side. So increasing the reactant will result to the formation of more products so as to ensure that the system attains equilibrium. And when you increase the reactant, that will result in a backward reaction leading towards to, um, to, in order to ensure that what that the system would attain equilibrium. So that is it about what about the effect of concentration. Now let's look at pressure. Now high pressure is favorable for the reaction in which there is a decrease in volume because an increase in volume would decrease the pressure, the effectiveness of the pressure. So. Pressure will be very active if there is a decrease in the volume of what of the system. So at low pressure, okay, so low pressure is favorable for the reaction in which there is an increase in volume. But at high pressure, it means that, but if the volume is high, it's low, or the, sorry, if the volume is high, it means that that will affect what the active uh, how active the pressure is going to be on that particular reaction system. So low pressure is more favorable when the volume is high, and then high pressure is more favorable when the volume is what is low. So pressure is kept constant when the volume is what is constant. Okay, so here <clears throat> we have what we call the moles of gaseous water reactant and the moles of what gaseous product. So basically, the effect of pressure is this. High, um, high pressure will require a decrease in volume. And if you are to involve a pressure in a system, it means that you will have to decrease the volume of what of your reactor. So as not to, to, to affect the stability of what of the system. So we have temperature. So an increase in temperature forwards what it favors the forward reaction in an endothermic reaction, okay? That is a reaction that has to do with what? Absorption of what? Of heat energy, okay? Endo, that is within the system. And in an endothermic, react endothermic reaction, the change in enthalpy is always what? Positive. But exothermic reaction, it involves the emission of what? Heat, heat energy, okay? So there is a decrease in temperature. So a decrease in temperature will favor what the forward reaction when it comes to what exothermic reaction. So endo involves the absorption of heat. Exo involves what the emission of what of heat energy. So the best thing to do in the case of an exothermic reaction, since heat will also be generated in the process, you ought to decrease the temperature of the system if you want the system to be in a state of chemical equilibrium. So let's look at applications of the Lucha-Player's principle that stated um, uh, that, said that if um, there is an increase in concentration and pressure, okay, that will also, that will also um, affect the equilibrium system in such a way that the system will shift so as to notify uh, or to uh, neutralize the effect of this one, of these factors. Now, so one is changing ice to water, to water, which is a melting process. So melting involves what the absorption of heat in order to what in order to produce water. So it is an endothermic water reaction. So when you increase the temperature of a system, since it is an endothermic reaction, when you increase the temperature, it will favor the forward reaction, okay? And when there is a decrease in volume, the favorable condi condition for melting of ice are what high temperature and what and pressure, okay? So in the case of melting of water, since it is a reaction that involves the ice must absorb what heat energy in order to what to change the state from solid to what to liquid. So in this process, okay, when you increase the temperature of a system, it will favor the forward reaction. 
because the molecules will absorb what heat based on what um, the increase in water temperature. So since it is an endothermic reaction, it will favor what the even when temperature is high and when pressure is high, that will favor a forward reaction. So long there is a decrease in what in the volume of the ice. So let's look at water to steam. Now, if you look at um, water to steam, so let us, let's say you pick an, uh, just a normal water at room temperature and you want to boil it to 30. Now you have to what, increase the temperature of, what, of the water. How do you do that? You do that by what? By heating it. Now, before your water will boil, the molecules or the particles in the water must absorb enough what, energy. So, the conversion of water or uh, evaporation or boiling, it is also endothermic. So if you increase the temperature, okay, that will also would favor the reaction. And if you increase the volume, it means that you will have to what, use a low pressure in order to achieve such, what, such process. So increasing the temperature of it will favor the forward reaction, okay, but you have to lower the pressure if the volume is what is increased. But if the volume is low, then you can go ahead and use what a high temperature. Now for solubility of gases in liquids. So when a gas dissolves in a liquid, there is a decrease in its volume. So an increase in pressure will favor the dissolution of all of the gas in liquid, as in the case of oxygen dissolving in water in water. So that is the solubility of a gas is directly proportional to the partial water pressure. That is Henry's law. So when you open a carbonated water bottle, CO2 comes out as its pressure what decreases. Carbonated water can be your Coke, can be your Coca-Cola, uh, your Fanta, your Sprite. These are carbonated water drinks. All right, so let's look at just um, effects of temperature on solubility. So for exothermic substances, okay, it, as once listed, they are more soluble in cold water than in hot water, which means that low temperature will favor their solubility. And for substances like sugar and urea, okay, they are more soluble in hot water than cold water. So meaning that when you increase the temperature of what of the system, that will ensure their what that will speed up their rate of what solubility. Okay. So we also have another one which is formation of what nitric oxide. So here favorable conditions for the formation of the oxide, nitric oxide is this high temperature concentration of nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, and constant temperature, and also high. Uh, constant pressure and high temperature will favor the forward watch reaction of the nitric water oxide. So all these uh, things we just have to put into what, into consideration. Consideration. So basically, in a nutshell, going back to the equilibrium um, constant uh, system. Okay, so when the reactions are equal and when the forces acting on the system are equal, that will give rise to, an, to a system that is in what in equilibrium. And most equilibrium reactions, they are reversible reactions as they undergo both forward and what and backward reaction. And certain factors will determine if the reaction, when you introduce certain factors in the system, that will result will determine if it is going to be forward or if it is going to be what, if it is going to be backward. So I think I'm going to pause here. If you have any question, feel free to ask.
Yes, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. All right, so I think I'm going to stop here. Okay. So when next we meet, we are going to continue from here as well. All right, so thank you for having me. I do have a wonderful day. Thank you. All right.